thank you very much for the invitation to this very nice place here. So I will try to give a kind of, yeah, quite elementary introduction to Google Metrics, hope not too elementary, and especially uh, about spectral properties. And say after some, yeah, quite long introductory part, I will speak about concept <coughs> of reduced Google Metrics, which takes, uh, it's not the main top, uh, the only topic of this talk, but it takes an important part. This concerns the work done in collaboration with Katja and Dima. Katja will give a talk right in the first talk after the lunch. Ne? Here you see simple two exam uh, examples of the complex eigenvalue spectrum of two types of Google metrics associated to the either Wikipedia network from 2009 or the physical review citation network up to 2012. The red dots are what we call uh, uh, core space eigenvalues. That means a fraction of them is a fraction which we could commute, compute. Ne? And the blue dots here are what called subspace eigenvalues, which are very easier to compute. And the green one is special case because here we used a quite new complicated method for computation requiring high precision computations because of the matrix, which is numerically very tough. But this is not the main topic of my talk. But I can give uh, some, some private discussion, I can give details. So, what is the main object we look at? It's a kind of Perron Frobenius operators. Imagine you have some discrete uh, Markov process, some, some system with states. Uh, so, uh, with probabilities pj de time dependent on, uh, dependent on the discrete time and some linear evolution where, where you have transition probabilities and of course this normalization of these probabilities gives you the column normalization of this matrix all pronouns be positive and uh, this property implies that uh, of course is a vector of probabilities normalized it stays normalized over time that's okay it's important in general, this matrix needs not to be symmetric in our case. That's important. We therefore have complex eigenvalues. And this property here allows to show that all eigenvalues are inside the unit circle, as they all, 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 all on the border. No? So we have one trivial left eigenvector, which is this unit eigenvector, all entries one. If you take that equation here, simply E times E transpose, G is equal E transpose, therefore you have one eigenvalue, one, and then you need also the associated right eigenvector, which is less trivial, which we call a page trunk uh, in the context of Google matrices. There's at least one such eigenvector. There may be many, it may be degenerate, which is quite complicated. But in case if it's not degenerate, and if you have a finite gap between the second and first eigenvalue, you can show you start with an arbitrary initial distribution of probabilities. You iterate it in time long enough, you will converge to the page trunk. Ne? And the rate of conversion goes like the second eigenvalue power t. It's an exponential conversion. It depends how much smaller the lambda 2 is compared to 1. That's the point. It may be small. And you must not have any degeneracy for this to work. Ne? This is called the power method. It's an efficient way to compute a page trunk. So now, if you have a directed network, ne? We construct the adjacency matrix, similar in a way, but now for the directed network, we put a link. If you have a link k to g, you, we put the matrix element a g k equal 1, otherwise we put it 0. But now the matrix is not symmetric, it's important. We normalize then all non-zero columns of a to 1, we divide it by their sum. This gives the matrix which we call s0. However, there may be empty columns which corresponds to what we call dangling nodes. In that case, replace uh, the full column by 1 over n numbers. Also, he is a vector containing uh, unit numbers. Ne? And this matrix we call S. Ne? This matrix S has already the properties of a Perron Frobenius operator. But at this stage, the unit eigenvalue may be degenerate. Actually, if you take the university networks for the web page, then we have, may have degeneracy of 3,000 3, times because of many invariant subspaces. Also for Wikipedia, we may have degeneracies. And therefore, in order to obtain a, a unique page rank, but also for other reasons, one applies typically a damping factor. Taking this matrix, one applies this factor alpha, which is uh, smaller than 1, but rather close to 1, typically with 0 0.85. 
And uh, then we add some contribution of a projector here, this simply projector uh, which projects on this uh, unit vector. This matrix has the same symmetries as the, as the S, as the pronounced for Venus operator, but here one, we keep one eigenvalue one and all other eigenvalues are scaled down with a factor alpha. Therefore you have a ga gap and there's nice convergence and this lambda one here and after the application of the damping factor the first M is no longer degenerate and the page trunk algorithm to compute the leading page trunk for this vector is, uh, converges quite well. It is also possible to apply the same procedure to the inverted network where you, you replace the adjacency matrix by its transpose. Call it A star, this gives the matrix S star, G star. But here on the level of S, this is, this is no longer the transpose because we applied the sum normalization to the columns here. This is called Chirank, ne? and of course here Green Page is a famous paper where they introduced uh, this expression essentially ne? as an idea. Here's some simple example ne? of a directed network, five nodes and a certain number of links. The adjacency matrix. Essentially, uh, the links they go from a column, if you take a position, you need column number to row number. For example, the one here is from uh, column one uh, to row two, no? or here's a, this one, for example, from column two to row three, etc., etc. Then you normalize all non-empty columns, it gives you one over two, one over three. Only the last column is empty, the dangling node. Therefore, we have to insert one over five here. Network size is five. This gives the matrix S, it's no? a simple example. And now here, first uh, application for university networks, that, uh, that means the web, the web pages of the University of Cambridge and Oxford from 2006. And uh, we take, of course, all links which go outside the world, the uh, only links inside the web page uh, are kept. No, no links going out to other websites, of course, removed. Here we have computed page rank and also chi rank for both cases. Uh, sorry, this the damping, the usual damping factor. No? and it's a log-log representation, and in the horizontal uh, axis we have the k-rank. That means after computation of the page rank, which has positive entries, we order the nodes according to page rank ordering. This gives uh, what we call a k-rank, or k-star rank for, for the chair-rank case. No? Therefore, it's also monotonous covert decays. And we see quite well there's a kind of typical power law localization with some exponent close to, to minus one. No? And the, this is, I have written here this eigenvalue formula. It shows that the page rank at of some node i represents the importance of this node at obtained of the sum of all other pages pointing to it, but with the weight of their page rank. It's not only the sum of other links, but sum times their own importance. Therefore, we have a self-consistent equation. That's what makes a big difference between Google and, before that, other search engines. That's the important thing. And of course, in search engines, uh, the point problem is not finding matches when you search for a word or something, it's but to order all the results in a reasonable order. That's uh, the basic idea of Google. Now, mention some numerical methods we used to study. Of course, there's this power method to compute page trunk. It converges like val alpha 2. There's also, apart from k and k star rank, uh, a 2D rank, which is a combination of both obtained when we draw k and k star in, in a plane. When we start with increasing squares from below, we each time a node enters a square, each, it's the next one in the 2D ranking. It's a combination of this. Uh, the eigenvalues are complex. No? We can fully diagonalize matrices say, for size up to 10 power 4. It's not that big for typical uh, networks. But then we can also use the Arnoldi method to compute, say, 100 up to 10,000 eigenvalues, largest eigenvalues for much bigger networks. No? Uh, and actually, even, but before we apply the Arnoldi method, one has to take out what I call invariant subspaces or network people call buckets. No? You, we can determine in advance before diagonalizing the buckets and this gives this uh, triangle, uh, this uh, block structure here and this S, S, double S index is for subspace 
contains itself diagonal, many diagonal block entries for each packet. No? We can diagonalize them separately, mostly exactly. And that has an advantage. We take care of these degeneracies of the unit eigenvalue. No? We can count it even. And there's no prob numerical problem here. And then we remain with a cost based contribution, which has actually typically a leading eigenvalue below one because their contribution from the cost base. Cost based nodes may enter the subspace nodes, but not the other way around. Therefore, the cost based part it has the same eigenvalues, but uh, the leading eigenvalue is typically below one, but uh, <coughs> quite close to one. No? On main mention, in certain, for certain networks, especially the citation network of physical review, or recently we looked also at the Bitcoin network, we have either a triangular network structure. That means before we, uh, uh, that if uh, the fact that we, we, it's only approximately triangular because we have the dangling nodes, you have some empty columns that dangling nodes destroy the triangular structure, but without them, we would have a nilpotent matrix which has only zero eigenvalues. But because of the dangling nodes, it becomes a matrix with the proper symmetries. However, there are large, large Jordan blocks which are numerically a nightmare, the poison. No? That means even if you compute, say, for 10 minus 16 uh, pr double precision numbers, you may have errors of order 0.1, uh, uh, numerical errors, and uh, there are some tricks to take on some analytical, semi-analytical methods or high precision computations with uh, much, much more precision. And this was in particular important for the physical review citation metric. Okay, we applied it to these methods, uh, to university networks. The example of Cambridge I showed and Oxford were 200,000 nodes and 2 million uh, uh, links have a degree, a typical average degree of 10 out in degree. There's also a Linux kernel network, it's a nice directed network. We take the kernel functions as nodes. Uh, a function typically uh, may be called by other kernel functions, no? and this gives you a directed network. And functions may also call in, in loops, one function A may call B and B is A, so that's not a purely triangular network, but quite close. Uh, it's also Wikipedia, of course. This is, I think, uh, four, uh, four million nodes for English Wikipedia of 2013, and roughly 10 power, uh, approximately uh, 10 power eight, eight links. If you take other language editions, you have a, a little bit smaller networks. Also, World Trade Network uh, from the UN, uh, this data from 10 from the UN. There you have a small, now only 10 power four nodes, but you have a more complicated structure because a mixture of countries and goods is a more, quite more complicated problem. So analyzed by Leo and uh, Dima. No? We also studied, we got data of Twitter 2009. At that time, Twitter was still, say, modest in size with 40 million nodes and 1.5 billion links. No? But this was, of course, an only anonymous data without any names and so on. We had only uh, two columns, no, number, link, from, two. That was it. Uh, <laughs> nothing more. No? Uh, and of course, a physical citation. Have you noticed? Only half a million on your papers up to 2012 and five, uh, yeah, maybe in five million links. But okay, this is only citation links from inside physical review. No? Each paper in our time cites much many more papers. No? So, so here I come back to Wikipedia. This is an older Wikipedia, 2009. You have here the spectra for the, also and also more recent Cambridge, 2011, which is now bigger, <coughs> 2006. You see red are cost based eigenvalues, blue subspace eigenvalues, which are computed go much, there it's easier, we can compute them essentially exactly you know, without any problems at least most of them. Here's the same as Chiron. and Here you have a big amount of subspace eigenvalues. And here you see many subspace eigenclose. Well, in, in 2006 was even more extreme. We had blue dots on the full circle. That means uh, we had so many uh, complex eigenvalues on the circle itself that it's, uh, the, you could not even see the green line here. No? <laughs> We have also computed some eigenvectors. Of course, a page trunk, a damping factor of 0.85 is a black curves. We have also computed, for some cases, page chunk with a very small damping factor, uh, very 
say here, one uh, minus 10 minus 8, which is numerically very, very tricky, re required a particular algorithm. So here's a power method, a simple power method that does not work. It was a combination of power method and Arnoldi method, switched one to the other to a little bit. Uh, and then here we have also some cost-based eigenvectors. Ah, sorry. I uh, wanted to... Here uh, we have two, the first red and green are the top uh, cost values, and then blue and pink are two cost eigenvectors with large imaginary partner eigenvalue, which are actually quite strongly localized. If you say pink here, it has some big steps, it's a log log representation. And the same uh, also blue one here. And that shows that these are vectors where you have maybe 100 or 1,000 nodes, which are much more important than the other nodes. And actually, for many of these eigenvectors, you can identify themes and topics. That means here I show, uh, again, a part of the spectrum of Wikipedia. No? And here are the eigenvalues. And for each eigenvalue, for example, this correspond eigenvector contains in top not for the topic of England, of countries, about poverty, football, DNA, here mathematics. These are pieces on the real axis, which are simply increased as a zoom. So here's a... Uh, so this was always a nice possibility to identify certain communities using eigenvectors. And the question is how to analyze them in more detail. And this will uh, give rise to the reduced Google matrix approach, which I will attempt to two or three a few times, but later not right away, but in more detail. So, but before that, I would want to give a brief mention concerning Anderson localization, uh, which is very well known in solid state physics. Here I've written down the most simple, ah, sorry, uh, confused, tight binding Hamiltonian eigenvalue equation. You have your hopping element, you have a discrete lattice, uh, Cn is a wave function on lattice side n, and you have some hopping element t, and some diagonal disorder epsilon n. Uh, and it can be shown, and the disorder is random and uniformly distributed in this interval, of two parameters, w and t. And it is known in the one dimension, and even two dimension, the eigenstates are always exponentially localized, provided w is larger than zero. And in three dimension, we have localization for critical uh, disorder, buffer critical disorder, which is quite large. And below, you have diffusive dynamics. Um, Actually, if you take this as a network, if you put W to zero here, no, take out this term, then we would have a network, uh, we take uh, n points on a circle and uh, link only the neighbors, one neighbor, then you have a very trivial network, and the Laplacian of that network would be the Hamiltonian here, apart from some constant maybe. No? Uh, then, but then you don't have localization. No? But here, in addition, you have this disorder term, which is not present, of course, in the network. So, now if you go back to our page rank vectors, typically for the, uh, we have a more power law localization with an exponent close to 0.9. Yeah. <laughs> However, if you look at these core space eigenvectors, the leading eigenvector for core space, which have an eigenvalue close to 1, it turns out for that for certain university networks, we have this kind of picture, it means an exponential decay. In this. this is a K rank corresponding to the vector itself, that mean, again, we order the nodes according to the modulus of the eigenvector components. And you have a strong exponential up to, and then sub set some saturation at a constant value, but it's with extremely small, 10 minus 20, 10 minus 17, here 10 minus 8. And the corresponding core space eigenvalue, they're not exactly one. First, I, when I discovered numerically, thought it's one, I thought there's a bug in my program, but it's not true. It's, there is a dif difference which is significant, and we, uh, using appropriate algorithm can compute the small difference no, in a direct way. That is possible. And these are, that means we have here what could be called a quasi subspace. That means we have a bucket which is not perfect. Uh, uh, it's linked only by a dangling node, but very late to the other nodes. That means the probability to remain in the bucket is very big, but not perfectly one. It's, but it's very close to one. In any case, this gives a nice also exponential localization here from some particular cases. One other topic one can study is the issue of Wahlfaktal. Uh, for this, you need to uh, uh, try to find a scaling. You compute, you take some cutoff number below one, 
say maybe 0 0.9, 0 0.5, or even 0.1. And you count the number of eigenvalues which modulus above this number, which you call n lambda. And then you see how does this number scale with the network size. The problem is to have such a scale, you need many networks with different sizes. No? It's only, uh, and if you take the physical review citation network, it's quite easy. You simply cut it at some, you have it depends on time. No? You cannot each time step, you have a smaller network, therefore you can, uh, you see here the ne network size of the physical review, which in this period here doubles every 11 years, uh, doubled from 19, yeah, uh, 10 roughly to 2010. Okay. No? Uh, and therefore you have, you have a time-dependent network which increases over time and we can apply the scaling and here you see the results. If the network size is above say 10 power 4, a bit more, then you have a, a nice power law uh, which is here and you can fit this exponent b which turns out to be 0.51 if you take lambda c 0.5. Here another different value which reduces somehow the exponent slightly and here we have a dependence uh, of this exponent for different values of the cutoff uh, value of lambda. No? But here uh, these values, maybe these are numerically not perfectly stable because of the numerical uh, problems. No? Uh, similar thing can be done for the Linux kernel uh, network because here you have also different networks depending on time, the different Linux versions, you know, there are many. And this was a time when the last Linux version was 2.6 something. If you were doing it today, you would have even much more, <laughs> much bigger uh, scales. Here's also a, vial, a similar exponent, which is uh, 0.65 for these two uh, cutoff values, which was studied in 2011 by Leo and Dima and Alexei. Uh, there will also be the talk of Stefan this afternoon. No? He will uh, speak about uh, this kind of exponents, but in the context of me more chaotic uh, maps, if I understand correctly. There are also some Ulam maps, which were also studied by Dima and Leo, uh, which I did not mention here, but for which you can also compute this kind of exponents. No? Ah. ah, yeah, I had also some small part of random matrix, Perron Fabinian matrices, which we did also at the, uh, in this work here. The point is, people know very well this classical random matrix ensemble for Hamishian, Hamiltonian matrix uh, very well since 1955 uh, from Wigner. Uh, and here everything is quite well known, especially the level statistics of closed levels are uniform, uh, universal, and they apply to many complicated physical systems uh, like nuclear physics or in quantum chaos and so on, you have especially the nearest levels. Space and has has a uniform shape and so on. And the conditions <coughs> practically for, for this university are quite low. That means it's quite easy to enter in this region of universality. And we tried similar kind of some for Perron for me, but it turns out there's no universality, as you will see. The idea is simply you take a matrix obeying the symmetries of some normalization and uh, try, uh, say, every matrix element to be random with the same distribution, some function p of g i j, and they are non approximately non-correct, approximately because you have to respect the sum normalization. You draw, that means numerically you draw them all and then you normalize, which introduces slight mini correlations. And the first thing you see, because of the sum that you see, the average must be 1 over n. That means the average matrix is simply a projector matrix which has one eigenvalue 1 and the other eigenvalue 0. And the eigenvalue 1 is because the uh, flat corresponds to flat page rank because the eigenvector everywhere 1, no? or 1 over n, or 1 over square root n, and other eigenvalues are 0. This is only the average. But then you have a spectrum 1.1 1 .1 and then 0, which is highly degenerate. Then you can think of uh, degenerate perturbation theory for the zero eigenvalue for the fluctuations. And then you can apply known results for non-symmetric uh, um, random matrices, which gives you a uh, uh, circle uniform uh, density of states, circular eigenvalue density in the complex plane. And from the variance of the area, you can estimate uh, the radius of, of this circle. This is a known result. No? Uh, and it turns out this is, uh, you have this kind of radius, and then it depends what do you put for this variance, and then you have different type of 
models here. For this issue, you can, for example, say you choose a uniform distribution between 0 or 2 over 1 for every element, which gives you a full matrix. In that case, the radius is 1 over uh, proportion 1 over square root n. It goes to 0 for large networks. You can also choose a sparse network if you say the probability has a high probability of zero value for G and a small probability of some other values to respect this total average and variance and you get a different uh, parameter for sigma. If you work it out, you turn out that the radius scales like one over squared of Q, Q is a number of non-zero elements per column. I can also try a power law with an exponent here between two and three, which is an interesting part. Below uh, two, it's not possible because you could not compute an average. And above three, and turn back to the full case here. No? And then you find the uh, radius, which is some power law, which is in between, yeah, if you take n here and here, that means between square root or constant. And if you try numerically to verify, it's quite easy, it works very well. The only one realization was 400 eigenvalues, no? or say, I mean, the network. Here's only the zoomed circle, for, which is very small because you see the scales here. Here, if you have a sparse uh, case, there are two versions, uniform sparse or constant, that means you put one or random numbers on the sparse elements. And here you have the circles which are proportional, one over square root of 20 here and all dots inside work, works. And here's the uh, one eigenvalue outside, of course. No? Then here's the power law. You have also kind of circle rays, but the circle is not really uniform. It, there are, it's more problem. This model is a little bit more complicated. You have a fit of this uh, scale in theoretical curve. Okay, the expo fitted exponent is somewhat different, but okay. Here, this is a different version. Here we put a triangular uh, random matrix. That means the lower triangle is zero. This is not the model. Uh, that means here you have uh, different distributions. In that case, already the average has a non-trivial eigenvalue, which uh, the average is the blue squares and the fluctuations gives the red dots. No? Okay, but this <coughs> is a different case. Important thing is what you find. You find spectra, which are nice circles no, with some radius no, uh, here. No? and the unit, which is not at all what we see for realistic networks, so to speak, there's no universality, actually. Actually, the spectra of Wikipedia or university networks, they have a subtle structure, and it depends really on the networks. There is, a for each network, particular information, which gives you a particular eigenvalue spectrum. No? Now, I turn to the issue of reduced Google metrics. Uh, this is the first publications also together with Katya. But Katya will give uh, also more further applications of this method in the afternoon uh, in her talk. But first, some about the theoretical background. The idea is the following. Now we take, uh, we have a directed network, we have a Google matrix for this matrix. And now suppose we choose some sub-network, a very small, modest number of nodes, NR, ah, sorry, yeah, a small number NR which provides a decomposition reduced network, and the other nodes, let's say, call it scattering nodes. This gives a block structure of the matrix. This is a small matrix, there's a bigger matrix here, and also uh, corresponding to the page chunk vector. And you can work out this quite easy algebra. The eigenvalue equation for the page chunk, you can write it as this, such an eigenvalue equation with an effective reduced matrix here. It's two or three lines of uh, your matrix algebra. Uh, this also is, uh, in follows the line of uh, Schur's formula if you take block inverses of matrices. No? It's the same ideas which are behind. Here's this one. It's okay because we did it for the page chunk, but imagine you would put here a lambda here for some uh, other eigenvector. Then you would also obtain lambda here. But then the lambda would also appear here, and g would be depend implicitly on the eigenvalue. What we did here is we concentrated, of course, on the page chunk value. But we have one here. No? And then you have two types of conditions. These are direct links. No? But here you have a uh, more complicated contribution, which we call scattering contributions, which are the interesting new part. And we can also work out that this matrix has the same symmetry properties as uh, Google Maps as such, positive elements, some number of column. Uh, this is quite easy. And I want only to mention there is a nice analogy uh, with the issue of chaotic scattering uh, with the S matrix formula, which was found by Mao Meinmol a long time ago, the context of nuclear physics of compound nuclear scattering. But this formula 
especially with H being replaced by a big random matrix for some chaotic, uh, say, it's a classically chaotic system, but in a quantum version of the system. And W, uh, transition matrix elements from this system to scattering channels. Uh, say, open quantum dot is a classical example. No? And uh, this is a statistical object because H is random and many effort has been done to evaluate statistical properties, average of this matrix of variances, average conductance, localization. You can also take here more complicated Hamiltonians which are for one dimensional localization problems and so on. This is a model which has been exploited in the context of mesoscopic physics since uh, at least 20, maybe 30, even more, even more than 20 years now. Uh, maybe 20, more than 25 years now. And in context of nuclear physics, even much longer than this now. But the uh, important thing, mathematically, it's quite relevant, uh, uh, quite the same. It's the same mechanism of Schur's formula, which is behind of deriving this. We have some, uh, say, this is a scattering part, and this is a direct, OK, here's one. Normally, there are some direct scattering phases in real physical models now. Now the problem is a practical. Go back here. You see, if you to evaluate, we need to compute this matrix inverse, and this is normally numerically a very tough problem because this part G S S still a very big matrix comparable as the initial network, and it has one eigenvalue close to one. Means if you expand, theoretically this converges, but the rate right of convergence is very slow. You had to have to add up millions of terms. You cannot do this, but what you can do, you, you know, if you take the initial G as a version with the damping factors, and you know there's only one eigenvalue close to uh, one. The other eigenvalue is, uh, uh, say, below alpha, or at most alpha. And you can take out analytically its contribution by suitable projectors here. PC is a projector on the eigenspace to this leading eigenvalue. And the idea is you compute first using also page trunk algorithm applied to this matrix, left and right eigenvector, leading eigenvector for this matrix GSS, compute its leading eigenvalue, which is lambda C, which is very close to one. Then you have a projector on this eigenspace, you have a complementary projector. You can write it as this, and here you have the exact analytic inverse, and here you have some projected matrix G, which appears, ne? G bar, ne? and this G bar, has a leading eigenvalue which is below alpha. That means this series here converges fast in comparison to this one here. And this can be numerically, all this can be numerically implemented in an algorithm. You can compute these projectors. Actually what you do, you, you have to apply this to some given vector and you have to uh, apply the successive matrix vector multiplication. But this can be all done and this converges quite quickly. So as a result, we have so three different components, never no, mind, direct links, then a contribution uh, which we call P, PR for projector, which is a contribution where we take out analytically the leading eigenvalue, and OK, we can rewrite this with some different vectors. This is a rank one matrix here, that's an important thing. And then we have the real scattering is a battery out? No, no, it's okay. No, the sound. Ah, I had the impression that's uh, yeah, okay. Then you have uh, yeah, this is a real scattering contributions, which gives an in interesting indirect. And it turns out that numerically, the projector contribution is a dominant one in percentage is maybe ninety five or ninety six percent of the normalization. The direct links a few percent, and also this a few percent. However. It's this contribution which has a more interesting structure and allows to identify, say, indirect trans followers uh, network. And we have studied, the first application was to certain uh, leading politicians of different countries. For example, here I show simply in what we call density in the log uh, K, log K star plane. No? This represents somehow a picture of the networks. No? In, uh, yeah, in K rank and uh, the page rank and she rank order, two dimensions, and the red dots are the position of the politicians we chose. No? Here, for example, we chose 20 leading politicians of US using English Wikipedia, UK. Here is a G20, this is okay, the, the states leader of G20, and here for German politician France, but here we choose the respective uh, uh, Wikipedia of Germany, of German language, French or Russian. No? 
So, but I will present now here only some results for the G20 and the French case. No, that means uh, from here this and uh, this one, uh, but there are also other results. Here you see the what you call KK plane uh, first of the G20 politicians. You see Putin, Obama. Obama is leading in K rank and page rank, but Putin is leading in J rank. Uh, it's more communicative. No? And then you have here other stately uh, Cameron. I must say this is from 2013 or 2000. That means it's uh, not up to date. No? Uh, uh, Trump uh, it does not appear here. No? He appears for the US in some place, but lower place. Here we have for French politicians here as well. I think uh, pre active presence is not even in there here. Macron, no? it's Sarkozy, uh, Hollande, uh, Mélenchon, and so on. Uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen, Marine Le Pen, and Raphael. And this is. Uh, the same, you have, here we choose 40 politicians. So here I show for the G20 case, the, this reduced Google matrix. In the, so I have a color density. That means red is for maximal matrix elements, blue for minimal, and green uh, intermediate size. This is a full reduced Google matrix. No? This is a contribution of the projector part, which is very good. We see numerically it's essentially this. This is a very simple structure. We don't see much here. Here you have the direct links, no? and here you have the indirect links, which turn off from this power series, which we have add up. No? And also here you see most contribution come from diagonal terms. That means in even if in indirect links, a web page or a politician, the web we speak of the Wikipedia web page of a politician and they have some indirect links going out, making some and coming back. Uh, this gives a quite considerable number of contributions, which are not as interesting uh, that interesting as well. They see other contributions are more interesting. So here I show the first uh, direct contributions, uh, one corner of the previous, uh, but with the names now here. Here you have Obama, Putin, and what you see here is, for example, Obama is obtaining links from Cameron, from Harper, a strong, rather strong, yeah, Merkel, and the next one even stronger thing. The strongest link is here coming from, uh, I'm not sure, from uh, Barroso, it gets it from somewhere either, either here. No? These are the direct links. And now here we take the indirect links, but we're taking out the diagonal contribution, which increases the other, other dots. And here we see, for example, uh, Merkel becomes now a strong link from uh, Hollande, I believe, yeah. And there is no direct links in the for uh, former picture. There was a blue square here. If you see here, Merkel, uh, Hollande going to Merkel, there's nothing here. No? Uh, but here there is a strong link. That means the web page of Hollande is for France going, citing other pages because uh, French German collaboration and then going back to Merkel. And this is important. That produces this kind of indirect links. No? And here you can now. For each politician, we can say we take the top three or four in each line that gives the top three or four followers, or the other way around. When he cites somebody, which we call top three friends, we can now uh, determine a, a, fish, a re different network of friends or followers simply taking the maxim ah, sorry, taking the maximum values per line or per, per row for each case. No? Skips here. I will have a graphical representation for the French case. Yeah, here we have the French case, the bigger one, no? uh, Kaye Sarkozy Hollande. We see his followers uh, and his friends. Those uh, uh, yeah, who know French politicians can <laughs> try to understand things. But again, I remind, uh, we're speaking here of links of corresponding Wikipedia pages. No? And a link may have a, um, uh, may have positive, may be positive or negative. No, we make you know, it, it has at this point it doesn't have uh, a moral or other value as such. It's, some, it's important. No? so and here we have uh, this picture. So what we show here, using this previous matrices, um, we present here, for example, the we take for the f there are five say political groups: say to right, right, extreme right left, very left, and uh, the Green Party. No? We take leader, leaders of these groups. And then we take uh, two step, maximum two steps of indirect uh, either friends or followers. No? These are for friends and followers. 
and here using this full reduced Google metrics, and here using the, the QR contribution of indirect links. And if you take here for the friends, then we see we add two others, this is Ségolène Royal, and I think it's this is Raffara. We add two other, and then it stops, there are no other links, they remain quite inside. But if we take these other methods, then you have much more interesting links here, no? going out. And uh, for the followers, it's a bit different. Here we have many links in both, both cases, but sometimes there are also strange structures. Yeah, uh, guys, uh, yeah, here uh, in the corner of yeah, <laughs> from <laughs> and so on. No, okay. And there are many other applications, not only politicians, for example, geopolitics, or called terrorist networks, or painters, uh, which, uh, <coughs> of which Katya will talk, uh, speak in the afternoon uh, in all detail, which even better, nicer pictures than here. I have some time. Okay, <coughs> then to close, I, only, uh, I want to speak some work in progress we started recently, which we call easing page rank, no? remind uh, Easing model uh, here, uh, well known uh, since a long time ago. Uh, see, uh, uh, you have some spins with plus minus values, classical spins. No? You have some, okay, you take nearest neighbor and some uh, ferromagnetic interactions in the field, and people know there's a phase transition to ferromagnetic state depending on temperature and so on. Solved one in dimensional case, and two dimensional can be solved <coughs> analytically, uh, and so on. What we tried. What we are trying is to apply a kind, of not exactly easy model, but to double the number of nodes. That means, suppose we have some networks such as Wikipedia with nodes IJ, and we double the number, we give them colors, say red and blue, can be for political affiliation, that means more communist or left or conservative people. No? We double each node, uh, and then we say, with for a node, given node I, with the probability WR, this node is either prefer uh, preferential for red, that means both versions link to red one, or he's preferential with a complementary probability, he's linking to the blue one. In average, uh, okay, each node is, it means is either this or this, but then uh, the distribution between different I nodes is then uh, given by these probabilities. No? Uh, this is one version, one can do many uh, other modelizations of this. And for the factor, uh, there's also this vector which appears either in the damping factor or in the dangling nodes, you know, this unit vector. And we replace here, uh, the we insert the probabilities for red and blue. <coughs> and this is some practical use to have, uh, uh, yeah, this has some practical meaning. No? But what we can do now is we can compute the page rank of the increased network. No? And we have components, say red components of a node and blue components. And now we can define a vote quantity which counts the number of nodes where the red ones are stronger, that where the page rank probability of red is stronger than of blue. <coughs> and one mu must say that when, you, when one computes page rank they are in the lower parts, there are many identical values very often. Uh, and therefore, it equal, uh, even on uh, numerical, uh, for double vision, even equ e exact equality is possible here as in reality. In this case, we add one over, one over two uh, contribution to have some symmetric result. And this gives a vote as a function, so here's a probability of preferential for red or blue, and here's the vote. Of course, extreme case, if uh, zero probability, then the vote is zero. And extreme cases. Uh, but then you have here this uh, transition in between. This is a point. One should mention that here is a kind of gap. Okay, the green curve is some nice fit. No? But one should mention that, okay, here the data points are not dense, but here between, this is a real gap. This is because of this uh, choice of a vector. It means there are a certain number of nodes which essentially depend only from such contributions from the damping factor and dangling nodes. It means if the WR crosses from 0.5 to 0.5 something uh, bigger, no? then you have a big jump in number here, a, a jump, a big uh, this step here. No? Uh, okay. You can also now study the effect of an elite. Uh, what does it mean? It means we take, f uh, say, a small number, say, NL elite nodes, <laughs> for which we provide a different probability uh, for the preference preference, color preference or political preference. 
and uh, WF for the other nodes, a big population. And the elite nodes may be selected as, say, top NEL nodes, maybe 1,000. No? Either you using K rank or the K star rank or 2D rank, the different rankings. No? And then we look how the mo vote of the, the, this curve here is modified, uh, is modified with respect to this elite. No? And uh, we did this for Wikipedia, recent Wikipedia 2017, a thousand elite node. And what you see here is this mod modification. Here the probability of the elite is uh, zero. That means perfect preference for blue. The elite, all elite people are only preferring blue color. Uh, and then here, this is the pr probability for the other nodes. And of course, this is going down because the, uh, this gives you the vote for red nodes. But the maximum is about, uh, yeah, the, the minimum here is about 0.5. It's some strange peak, but it's numerically uh, stable. I verified very carefully so many data points. It's not an accident or something like that. This is the uh, green dots are for ca choosing top elite nodes as, as chair rank nodes. And here's a page rank or 2D rank nodes. Here's the same, a different represent. That means this line here. As W corresponds to the red points here. That means here I take the data for K rank, uh, K rank nodes, but with different values of the elite probability going up here. And you see, uh, and here in the color scale, minus one corresponds to red and plus one to yellow. Uh, yeah, yellow, but this is not, the, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, this is more orange, uh, should be orange and not pure yellow. It's different. To, the yellow, the point is, the scale here minus one corresponds to this minimum value, and this value is never reached. You have the strongest positive number is here. Uh, that means uh, the maximum uh, maybe for other uh, values are a little bit above, but not that much. No? And here you see, of course, if the elite probability is close to 0 0.5, and uh, here the for other words is 0 0.5, then it's of course a positive effect. Here is this line is a zero line and then here's positive and the other part here is negative. And here you see a strong reduction due to the effect of elite. Okay, these are, say, pr preliminary results. No? Uh, and there are also many questions, especially how to modelize this. This is the first attempt to, to modelize this type of networks. So conclusion or better summary. I reminded some basic properties for Google metrics, which are constructed from directed networks. Uh, web, Wikipedia, Twitter, Linux, citation, and so on. You can efficiently compute page rank, leading complex eigenvalues, also exploiting the structure of invariant subspaces, which is, by the way, I think, believe, uh, strongly related to what Sergei told us yesterday about this st uh, the structure of networks with the G in, G out. I think this invariant sub is the uh, G, uh, G out part, I believe. No? Uh, <laughs> but it's another word <laughs> for this. Uh. Okay, then uh, the you saw something about localization, which is quasi exponential localization. Uh, there are certain cases where one can study wild fractal scaling for certain networks. Typically, networks where you have some way to have a time dependent network with different network sizes. That's what you need. No, otherwise, if you have a given network, you cannot scale of, if you have only one network. Then, uh, different simple models of random parameter do not really describe the spectra of realistic Google metrics. Then, of course, the approach of reduced Google metrics uh, for subnetworks gives this decomposition of Genesis 3 contribution, allows to construct uh, a friend fuller network using either the full reduced Google or the third component. And there are also a possibility to use different language editions of Wikipedia, uh, which takes into account the multicultural aspect. And finally, some yeah, new work, uh, beginning of work for what we call easing page rank and where the effect of selected elite nodes on the world can, can be studied. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> so, thanks. Is there any questions or <coughs> comments? What, what, what is the miracle uh, that happens in the... Uh, could you uh, explain it again, the, the, the computation of the scattering computations? 
uh, yeah. Spectral gap in the in the PSS or. Uh, uh, you speak of this here? Yes. Uh, uh, or next, maybe next, uh, yes. Yeah. How I obtain this formula? Uh, yes, yes. What I do is the following. You have here a, a matrix, no? and uh, it's similar to what Pete told us. Kind of we make a spectral decomposition of this matrix. I and you define a projector formally. That's one way of doing it. Okay. So it's a projector of the eigenspace, but the point is since it's not symmetric, the projector, you need right and left eigenvectors. This is, for example, a projector. If you square it, it's one. If you multiply it with QC, it's zero. So the computation is easy for the... Yeah, what you can do is this, you take this GSS no, to yes. compute CL, CL, and same time you get lambda C. The point is like page trunk algorithm, mm -hmm. but each time you also change the norm of the vector and the renormalization provides you automatically with the lambda C the eigenvalue, you compute everything, and if you test, uh, verify that both lambda c's from left and right are actually the same, no? uh, that's, then you compute PCR, PCL, lambda c. No? When you have this, you can apply PC to some vector. You can, of course, apply QC, which is 1 minus P, also to vectors. And then what I need to do, it's not really told here, if I go to this formula, take it here, take this, the, we have still contributions from outside, which are rectangular matrices here. Yes. That means here you have uh, a few number of columns, but very many lines. Yes. That means you take uh, one column, that's only, you take a to compute, so you do it column by, co by column. No? You take one column, this gives you a big vector here, you multiply it to this, and this, this G bar, you apply uh, really, uh, literally this formula, this QC, okay. Uh, you can s economize, if you multiply two Gs, you can econ economize one QC. You apply this QC, GCS, QC, and so on, so on. You add it up, you test for convergence, and so on. Uh, and when you have done this, uh, then you apply against here some, uh, this has a other way around, many columns, but a no small number of rows. And then you get uh, an, a row, uh, that means a column, that can, then you get a column of this matrix, and then you do it again for the other columns. No? And the nice thing is, since this for column is completely independent, it's n very nice to make it in parallel. Uh, you know, you can do it uh, in if you, you do you do open MP parallelization, you can yeah. compute it all parallel. Uh, if you have a machine with yeah. twenty <coughs> processors, you can. And there's there's no loss in uh, say. Uh, scaling is perfect, in the, which is very rare in okay. <laughs> numerical computations. <laughs> it's a bit tricky, no? a bit, mm. uh, but it's, there's no essential problem. No? But the assumption, of course, is that you do this for a matrix uh, where you have applied this damping, where there's only one leading eigenvalue, no? mm. which is close. I, suppose you have, you can, we have formulated it theoretically, if you have, say, two or three leading eigenvalues, you can generalize it by increasing this projector parts and instead of rank one you would feel would be more complicated but not impossible. So is it realistic? Yeah, I mean just one uh Yeah, the just one is what we have from the Google matrix <laughs> because of the damping factor. No? This comes out. Uh, okay, you can say take now a model, a network model where you not with a damper, but suppose you have two uh, eigenvectors which are close to one. No? Uh, say different model, not with damping factor, and you want to compute a uh, reduced uh, matrix of this, then it would be pertinent. No? Other questions? <coughs> okay, if not, we can speak again.